Hello, I'm Christopher Udall. And I'm Jaden McCary. And we're students at BYU Hawaii. Have you ever wondered why people from the mainland are always complaining about their dating life on campus? <laughs> sure have, Chris. Me too. So we're going to set off on an adventure, and we're going to find out why that is. Who are the people that are complaining? And are people really satisfied with their dating lives here at Brigham Young University, Hawaii? Come, follow us. Here we go. All right. You know, as Chris and I made our way around campus, we sensed the disturbance in the force. We realized that everyone complains about the dating culture, or at least most of the people from the mainland do, and we wanted to know why. So, we set out to find out what exactly it was that people were so unsatisfied about, as well as what they meant by the dating culture. And we made a survey that addressed all of these issues and gave it to over 170 people. Whoa! Whoa. Let's look at the results right now. <laughs> so first thing we had to do was establish a demographic. Who are we going to focus on? We felt that the people who had experienced BOUH's dating culture would be the ones whose input would be the most valid. So we decided to include only people who had been in BOUH for at least two semesters. Because expectations shape the narrative that we're looking at, we decided to ask what your expectations were prior to coming to BYU Hawaii and how firm they were in those expectations. They had expectations for dating at BYU Hawaii. And those expectations were that it would be a regular part of their college experience. We also felt that it would be necessary to see how the expectations for finding a spouse were contributing to the narrative. We sought to find out if the BOUH students were coming in with an expectation for finding a spouse, or marriage, while attending at BYUH. What we discovered is that, as a whole, they were coming in with an expectation. And that, that expectation was that finding a spouse would be at least some part of their experience. An interesting phenomenon we found while doing this survey was something that we've named Look Back Syndrome, which is people who have love interests outside of BYU Hawaii whose love interests might not be reciprocated, which is shown in these graphs, showing that there is a good number of students that suffer from look back syndrome. Baby, look back! If you or a loved one is struggling from look back syndrome, please call 1 800 Love and Osborne. Finally, we sought to understand what was the experience that the BOUH students were having. And we discovered that dating was a minimal part of the BOUH students' experience. The next highest number being that of people who experienced it on a regular, weekly basis. This divide between students who were not experiencing at all and students who were experiencing it on a regular basis became interesting as we conducted our interviews because it was a pattern that we saw continuing to emerge. But there was a great divide between those who were having a decent experience of dating at BOUH and those who were having not. One equals not satisfied, five equals satisfied. Therefore, according to the general survey, BYUH students, as a majority, are unsatisfied with their dating experience thus far. After getting a general overview of the student body as a whole with regards to the dating culture of BYU Hawaii, we decided that we still weren't quite in touch with what was going on. So we decided to get real opinions from real people on the real streets to really understand the cultural narrative of dating at BYU Hawaii. So we went around and asked one simple question. Prior to coming to BYU Hawaii, what were your expectations for dating at BYU Hawaii? Let's hear what they had to say. Nada. Nothing. Marriage. Excited. So excited. Excited. Hopeful. Hopeful. Fun. Fun. Survival. Dismal. Minimal. Awesome. Curious. Hopeful. Fun. Exciting. I didn't really have expectations. Well, there sure were some interesting responses, Jane. Yeah, pretty optimistic, huh? Yeah, let's see how those panned out. By asking the question, what's been your dating experience thus far at BOUH? This is gonna be good.
Interesting. Fine. Fun. Roller coaster. Frustrating. <laughs> Slow, successful. Hello, I'm about to graduate and I'm not married, so I guess I haven't done a good job at it. Or maybe the dudes haven't done a good job at it. But I've had fun. I don't have dating experiences. So, there you have it. People are officially unsatisfied with the dating culture at BYU Hawaii. But why? Hold on there, Chris. First, we need to establish what they meant when they said the dating culture at BYU Hawaii. Come on! Let's go ask! If I ask you on a date, I'm gonna marry you. That's, I feel like that's kind of a stereotype here, especially with RMs. People here are too cautious, so like they don't ask each other on dates because like, it means a lot more, I guess, than it should. And when you do ask, they say no. Add that all together, it just means no on dates. I think just because we're such a small environment, we're friends with everyone, and so that plays huge role, I think, in getting to know people, especially when dating. I think when people say dating, like, people kind of, oh, like, they kind of, like, either get nervous or think, like, oh, crap, that means if I date this person, like, on a date, I'm going to get married, I'm going to get married. If you go on one date, it's not that you're a couple on a token, and all of a sudden, like, you're, everybody's like, oh, those two people. In digging deeper into the cultural narrative, we found two very interesting phenomena. The first we named small town syndrome. This fits under the theory we learned in class about agency versus structure. The structure of the town that we live in, being a small town, a small campus, and a small community of friends with a limited dating pool, leads to a feeling where if you date someone, you might hurt their feelings, or they might hurt your feelings, or things might be sped around. The small town syndrome is what we found in many of our uh, extensive interviews which describes the tightly knit or interconnected social constructs with the structure of a small town or in sm with small town syndrome. To ask one on a date is, almost, is asking for commitment and is almost the equivalent of asking for marriage itself. When people see one person dating another, they instantly assume, oh, they're gonna get married, or they're gonna get engaged, or they're dating, even if they might just be friends or hanging out. This causes a great amount of strain on the meaning of date, especially here in Laie, being in Hawaii with the laid-back culture. Now, when someone asks someone on a date, it sure does spread a lot of gossip, and boy, those rumors sure start flying, just like bullets in this old western. Fight, get the fight, get away! The next phenomenon that we discovered was something that we like to call pressure. Well, actually, we didn't come up with it. The students did. They kept talking about this pressure. What is pressure? When they say it, they basically mean the expectation that they should be looking for a spouse. What it really means is that they're afraid that if they say yes to a date, or if they ask someone on a date, they're going to limit themselves from other future potential um, dating prospects. We felt that this relates to the anthropological theory of idealism versus materialism. Pressure is a product of idealism, or that ideas are the basis of culture. Well, ideas as well as values and beliefs. The ideas, values, and beliefs that are contributing to this idea of pressure uh, actually correlate with small town syndrome and what I what was previously stated about limiting oneself from future dating prospects if they agree to a date. So the belief that agreeing to go on a date or asking someone on a date and then being seen on that date will limit their potential for future dating opportunities is contributing to the current culture of dating at BYUH. But you better do it soon, no time will be So, looks like the problem was small town syndrome and pressure after all. But what is it about small town syndrome and pressure that people didn't like? We went to ask more. Let's see what people had to say. 
I feel like there's a lot of expectations when you go on dates here. Um, I think it differs, it depends on the person, but I think there's a huge pressure on campus to get married right now. And suddenly people just up and get married. There's this really horrible stigma against dating where it's like if you're dating, you're practically engaged, which is terrifying. It's hard as most people don't have cars. So if a guy's gonna ask you out on a date and then he has you come pick him up or you meet at the bus stop, then they feel kind of weird. I do want to go on dates, but it doesn't really happen. We kind of have this hangout culture where you hang out with people until you maybe know you like each other and then you kind of go on dates. I think that's dumb. I want to see more people just going out for fun. Courting has been totally cut out of the picture. And it's gone, it goes from Either let's just be really good friends and do really good friend things, or let's make out a ton. And there's no like balance in between, there's no like let's court and see if we want to marry each other. It's just like fun and fun on two opposite spectrums. Fun as in like friends, or fun as in like maybe not doing anything we should. That feels girls a lot about you, but there's one for you so. It'd be nice to see some honesty from the guys and from the girls. You know, I've kind of dogged on some of the girls lately, but the guys are just as bad here. Um, I just like to see um, guys asking girls. Guys don't ask down girls on dates. Actually, maybe I just don't have a personality that's likable. Maybe I'm ugly, or maybe <laughs> I'm just not worthy of the super Justin Bieber guys here. I'm actually really so I can go to grad school with really mature guys. It's very apparent that every guy except for Shane Dyer who just got engaged <laughs> pretty much has dating issues and commitment issues. Well, with the problem solidly identified, we were ready to address it. So we decided to move towards an intervention. But what should we do? In this intervention, we decided to invite people like Gandhi to be the change that they wish to see in the world. Let's take a look and see what happened. According to George A. Kelly's social cognitive theory, oftentimes we have unhealthy behaviors because of irrational beliefs. One way to combat irrational beliefs is to attack them using behavioral shaming attacking exercises. So you live as if that belief didn't exist, or you live as if your assumption of the consequence of that belief wouldn't happen, and instead strive to focus on the best thing that could happen from living without that belief and any evidence against it. So following this idea and model, we invited students to attack the irrational belief or to approach what's positive about the believing the opposite of it. If ideas are the basis for culture, then the only way to start a new culture or to get what the students want, they need to live and operate under a new assumption or a new idea. Asking them to ask someone on a date right then and there invites them to act on a new idea. Okay, well, I want to go to the next one, so is it okay if I come? Yeah, please come to here. Okay, sweet. What time? In the morning. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so you asked someone on a date right now. Okay, how are you? Okay, do you have any other questions? No. Do you have any? What are you doing? Are you in the night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, 
If a culture comes from ideas, then if you change the ideas behind it, the culture can change. If students want to see a change in the dating culture of BOUH, they just need to get a new concept. Our intervention also touches on the theory of agency versus structure. We're operating under the presumption that we can change, or we can change the ideas, and that we're not a product of the structure. You're right, we can't really change the structure of BOUH and increase the population so that small town syndrome, nor pressure would be a factor. But what we can do is change the ideas that are creating the culture that create the conditions for those two things to exist. And we felt that the poster as well as the Facebook page and movement would help us to do that. If we posted the study and displayed them in a manner that was appealing to the audience, the facts that we discovered from the survey that we would be able to help them change their ideas about 
dating. As far as the results of the intervention are concerned, ideally they would have taken place over a longer period of time. The semester doesn't warrant that. But the feedback that we got from the poster is that people agreed. They felt like it would be possible as well. We feel that if carried over a longer period of time and as the Facebook page and movement generated momentum, this could be a legitimate means of influencing the culture towards what the UH students said they wanted as far as the dating culture for UH goes. In conclusion, people aren't happy with the dating culture of BYU Hawaii, but intervention is possible and people can change. Thank you, brother, for all of your help and your wonderful teachings this semester. We love you. Look around. Yeah, and every place feels like a familiar town. And now we're